let's uh, let's pray. Um, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the uh, for making us sufficient as uh, ministers of the new covenant, Lord. We thank you, and that sufficiency uh, is not of ourselves. It comes from you, and uh, we thank you for for that uh, for this whole dynamic of being co heirs with you, for being co laborers with you. Uh, and uh, Master, we we just want to thank you, Lord, for this uh, awesome privilege that we have, Lord, to to serve, uh, to to be part of your kingdom at the same time, serve and uh, reach others for the sake of your kingdom. God, we we thank you for this awesome privilege. Yes, Lord, we are uh, we're truly uh, blessed, Lord. We're truly it's it's just an um, Lord, uh, it's just the work, purely a work of your grace. And we just want to thank you for that. Uh, thank you for, once again, making us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, without further ado, uh, oh, I, uh, Sam, are you there? Sam is not there yet. Oh, Sam is there. Okay. I'm right, Sam, so. Yeah, so we have Sam and then followed by uh, Mangi. So Sam, you can take time to start if you're ready. Um, so we have about 12 minutes, so you can just be mindful of the time. Uh, now it's what, 11.04, and you can start right away. Okay, go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, Pastor, how do I share my presentation? Do I share from my screen, sir? Yeah, from your screen, you can uh, you can share. Okay. Um, I think what you need to do is open up, yeah, open up your PowerPoint presentation first and then share the screen because now actually we can see your system screen. So, yeah, so maybe you can stop sharing. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, Pastor, I have like 12 minutes. 12 minutes, yeah, it's 11.05, yeah, 12 minutes. Please go ahead, thanks. Thank you, Pastor. Um, okay. Good morning, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, thank you, Pastor, uh, and uh, thank you, everyone here, for uh, allowing me to share and present. Uh, so um, the title of my sermon is... Um, and on the spreadsheet, I put it as uh, set apart. Uh, and while I was preparing the presentation, uh, I just changed it to non-conformity, uh, the Christian lifestyle. So it's it's around. Uh, it's around. I think the title is a big giveaway. Uh, you, you only kind of get to uh, know um, what I'm speaking about. Uh, but just I, I just want to uh, start with a quick. Um, backstory of uh, the inspiration uh, behind this. Uh, so uh, in, in one of our classes, Pasha had asked uh, why uh, or when did we first come to accept the Lord and, and how. And uh, uh, so that got me thinking. And um, but but I had this backstory all along, which is you know, I was born to a, born in a Christian family. I was born to uh, a mother uh, who was a very radiant, who is a very radiant Christian, and uh, and she you know would always take time to get the family together uh, and pray and worship. About we had two three times. Um, my dad, uh, even though was from a Hindu background, uh, I think my mom never preached to dad, but he he accepted the Lord when uh, I was about eight years old, uh, and when uh, I was about eleven. As early as 11 years old, I think that's when I first uh, came to, uh, or that's when I accepted the Lord as my personal savior. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's, I think, looking at my mom's life, you know. Uh, but from then, you know, I, I wish I could say that you know, I grew up as a Christian and from an early youth, I devoted my life um, to the way of the Lord and, and I did everything right. But unfortunately, that didn't happen, and uh, and uh, I kind of uh, lost my way. Uh, had a conflicted uh, growing up, uh, conflicted, convicted, uh, resisted, rebelled, uh, all of those. And um, 
finally after a long time, I think, uh, in, since 2017, so not, not long ago, three, four years is when I fully came to my senses, um, took some time out, really asked some hard questions uh, about what am I doing with my life, and, and then that's when I decided, uh, you know, a lot of incidents happened which led to that, uh, but, um, but uh, it gave me a strong reason to believe that, uh, that I, I have to live differently. I have to live uh, a proper Christian life uh, you know, as, as it's supposed to be and, and not conform to the world uh, as I have been doing all along. So that's, that's the journey that I am on. And, and I feel um, this is an important message uh, because, I, I, you know, looking at my own lifestyle and I hear other people, especially people who are born like my age, uh, my age, a little older, younger uh, generation. That's, it seems like a pattern or a familiar story that, that many, um, many Christians born in Christian families, uh, some even uh, accepting the Lord at a very young age, somehow tend to lose their way, uh, rebel uh, all over the place, and then something happens, and then come to Lord. It's 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 uh, it's, it's a pattern, and uh, and I'm kind of that that's something that intrigues me, interests me, and and I feel very attracted towards. Uh, you know, doing something about it. Um, for me, a big inspiration is uh, inspiration as well as an exception is Pastor Ashish. I think he's one person who who accepted the Lord at a very young age, and then uh, just you know, hearing from all his stories, it looks like you know he he, he never deviated from the path, and he always dedicated. It. And and uh, that that is very fascinating to me, and, and I feel um, because we have a living example among someone we know. I feel it's possible. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about the young people who are there. So, uh, young Christians. Are, so, so this is this is a message very close to heart. So, uh, the goal of my message for today is, um, as believers, to consent that we are called to live a life of non-conformity, a different life, not not conforming to everything that's in the world, not following, not fitting. And I think that's that's a big struggle for me. When I look back, uh, I see a lot of my uh, deviation came from trying to fit in with my friends, trying to fit in with my peer groups. Um, so if, if I had just understood that you know, it's, it's not what I'm called to, you know, yeah, we're called to live in the world amongst uh, others, amongst unbelievers, but it's really not about uh, confirming. Um, so so that's, that's the goal. Uh, so by the end of the session, hopefully we will be able to um, really uh, consent as believers and also um, and also uh, hopefully we'll be able to see some practical ways of uh, how do we live a non-conforming non life. So let me start off with uh, a key verse, uh, Romans 12, to uh, a very known verse. Uh, it says, do not be confirmed to this world or to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable will of God. So uh, that's one. And I have a couple of verses that I want to share. Uh, let, me see. let me put it on the chat. I could quickly put, us, uh, put some um, verses on the chat for us here so that uh, we can go through some scriptures. Uh, can someone read uh, for us First John two fifteen to seventeen? And put it chat. First John. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, first John chapter 2 verse 15 to 17 yes do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world is passing away and the lust of it 
but he who does the will of God abides forever. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Abney. Uh, let me see one more. Uh, someone else could read. Um, Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Please sit on the chat also. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Okay, so that's Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand. Yeah, great, great. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. And last one. Um, I like this one, uh, favorite. I think it's uh, James 4, verse 4. Okay, James chapter 4, verse 4. And let me copy and paste it on the chat for us. Uh, meanwhile, if anyone can find that, Please continue. Shall I read it? Yes. You yes are Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sister Rupa. Uh, James really does know how to be subtle. <laughs> right? Um, so uh, let me let me go back to my slide. Um, so I think the Bible is very clear about uh, how um, how do we how do we um, engage ourselves when it, when it comes to engaging with the world, right? And it clearly says time and again that we're not called to confirm with the pattern of the world. We're not called to um, live as everybody's living. We're not even called to uh, you know love the things of the world. Uh, so it, 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 it clearly says that uh, it is a call for a different life. So um, let me just quickly um, go through what does that mean. So I think the rules of engagement, as I would like to call it, for believers uh, who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is, is different. And I'll just go over three. I think there's a lot of uh, different rules for us. But uh, the top three uh, that I think are, one is um, our handbook everything that um, that we can derive our knowledge from uh, we can go about i think comes from the bible uh, and uh, i i like to read psalm 119 over and over again i think the whole uh, psalm 119 is uh, on the importance of the scripture of word and how it can be a guiding light uh, so that that to me is um, very inspirational in knowing that Okay. Anytime I am conflicted, um, I want to make decisions, uh, I want to check myself, uh, I know where to refer to. Uh, the other rule, uh, I think, which uh, Jesus Christ sums up in Matthew 22, 37, um, 39 is, you know, where he says, all the commandments of the prophets and the laws are concised into this, which is uh, about loving God with everything that we have and, and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. Uh, which, which to me is prioritizing God over everything. That's number one. So you know, everything, like starting my day with, uh, how I present with the things that I'm interested about, what I'm surfing on the web, to my conversation that I have during the day. Uh, if if I am, if my if God is my priority, then uh, I think mostly it'll be about God. I'm, I'm seeking God. I'm, I'm I want to know Him more. So. So uh, that's that's uh, our rule number one of engagement that I think, and um, and uh, this one, the last one is uh, where um, it's it's also inspiration for me. Where uh, Peter in First Peter two eleven uh, says uh, that uh, we are to treat ourselves as temporary or as aliens while we're living in this world. Um, um, Sam, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I think the time is up. 11 17 so but yeah just go ahead and finish this point please yeah okay sorry so i'll just take two minutes to wrap up uh Pastor, if that's okay yeah okay 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 so um that we're living for another world uh, uh to treat ourselves as uh sojourners and pilgrims um so th th these are some rules um and i think for uh application uh, i think there are lots of ways where we can apply it um, and if i i was thinking of doing a quick activity on asking everyone in the chat uh, uh, how we can apply ourselves uh, and, and uh, you know, the obvious answers are not lying not stealing uh, being truthful being honest so 
a lot of things come to mind, right? Uh, something that I was thinking for myself, an interesting one was, and I'll, I'll close with this activity, which is um, around blind spots. Um, and this is uh, from uh, Matthew 7, 5, where uh, Christ talks about um, not being able to see the plank in one's own eye and uh, trying to remove a speck of dust in someone's eye. Uh, so on my slide, you can see uh, there's, there's sort of an optical illusion which gives you an illusion that there are a lot of black spots that constantly move around where actually there are none. So this is, uh, this is where uh, you know, we have blind spots. Uh, that's one. And the other one is, uh, if I could just ask um, you to uh, join your hands in this way. Uh, where if you stretch out your hand in front of yourself uh, with the two thumbs touching and if you close your left eye close your left eye and look at the left index finger top of the finger the nail okay, so you're, you're doing that you're closing your left eye and with your right eye you're looking at the opposite finger and if you look properly, I think you might be able to make your right finger disappear. And if, if you can get that, but uh, that was, I thought, one a very exciting, uh, interesting exercise where uh, sometimes we see things that are not there and uh, sometimes uh, things that are there, uh, we can actually uh, not see. So. In the, the only way to get around blind spots is by asking others. So that's that's uh, that's what I've been trying to do. So I'm now open to listening to hearing to my own blind spots. Uh, over to you, Pastor, to give me feedback and everyone else uh, on how how was this quick session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sam. That was uh, that was good. Uh, very nice. Um, uh, very very well presented i think uh, your your strength is uh, definitely you know you have a very conversational style of presenting so you should definitely um you know work that um uh, you know use that for your strength um so uh, the thing is with con conversational style of presenting is that everybody is you know automatically relaxed and then um uh, 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 but the thing is they relax right uh, so uh, having an having a story as an introduction definitely you know that that helps because people love to hear stories so having uh, stories um, whether it's about yourself or you know a testimony about something else that also you know uh, that helps so um, so that's good the, the only thing is the you know with regard to the time and uh, uh, so what happens in conversational style of preaching is like we we need more time you know, uh, one hour is not enough because we are, yeah. you know, we're narrating and there are, you know, a lot of things to share. So, um, so that's the thing. Uh, so when it comes to a short format uh, like this, um, it's good to, you know, time yourself and say, okay, uh, this I will speak, this I will not, you know, or even if I'm narrating, I make it in uh, short sentences and so on. Like, um, um, so that's 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 the only thing. So it has the, you know, it has the good good side of it which is you know we, we, which people are really drawn to immediately and uh, uh, but the the negative side is that uh, you know the time factor again um, so so that's uh, that's something to um, take note of uh, i really like the way uh, it was very simply uh, simply put you know our handbook um, the rule and uh, living for another world you know very easy to remember and uh, very easy to recall and and very difficult to forget right um, and and on top of that i think you use nice visuals for the presentation you keep the you kept the screen very uncluttered and uh, those are some you know some of the uh, practical side of things um uh, that you uh, that you did that was good as well only thing is yeah so when we're doing a short format it's best not to ask people to you know i was really when you did the introduction i was i was scared you know i was, I was thinking you know will sam be able to finish and i think avni yeah. put in a reminder uh, two more minutes so um, so that was the that, that was the only thing um, uh, but i think maybe you should you should just concentrate on maybe bigger formats you know workshops uh, those kind of things where um, uh, where you know of course you need to be mindful of the time again uh, but then it'll be a little more uh, flexible uh, um, okay so we, we have other uh, feedback here but let me just finish uh, mine um, um, so so you had to kind of rush through the application right so I think that um, that uh, that was the thing which um, but I, I but Sam I, I couldn't make the connection between uh, you know the blind spots 
and uh, and what you are actually um, conveying you know uh, of course the, uh, we are living uh, about non conformity and the blind spot what was that connection i just wanted to know. Um, thank you. <laughs> you and I wanted to end by, um, I think, provoking or, or inspiring us to uh, think of ways which we could, uh, like one practical thing that we could do uh, or, or even uh, think about doing to live a life of non-conformity. Uh, and um, I, I, what I'd imagine my mind was to ask in the chat, uh, ideas from uh, people how how they could think uh, one one or two yeah. things that they, that believers should do, and um, and and I wanted to conclude by uh, talking a little bit about blind spots that uh, you know as believers as everybody else we have blind mm. spots, but something that Jesus encouraged us is to do is um, to before we can you know uh, Christians come across often as judgmental people and we are very quick to criticize and and look at other find faults and, and not look at ourselves. So I wanted to uh, kind of with the exercise on blind spots, I wanted to uh, say like mm -hmm. one, something that every believer should do is be aware of his or her own blind spots, uh, constantly seek feedback on how they can improve, not, not go into this uh, zone of I'm perfect. And, and just because I'm living, in, or I'm, I'm saying that I'm living a non-conforming life, uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, there's, there's, that there's no mistake in my life. But but there mm -hmm. are so that that's what I wanted to con conclude with. Okay, okay, yeah, probably um, that aspect uh, can be worked on somehow, I guess, to to come through clearly, um, mm. and uh, that is that is something. So when it comes to application, um, yeah, so maybe yeah, uh, so from from the activity to say okay. This is something that you can do. I think that would help. Um, but yeah, but that could be uh, probably worked on to uh, come come across or to be communicated even in a, in a stronger, clearer. I think that that would be of great help. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So that's uh, those are some thoughts that I had. Uh, one thing right at the beginning was, um, um, uh, I think. Uh, like when we when you read the scripture right romans 12 and then also um i think there was uh to my ears i i don't know how it was uh, you know it, it it seemed like um uh, i'm just typing it you know confirm versus conform mm. you know sometimes it sounded confirm so uh so to make that consistent you know to I don't know. Maybe you were thinking about something, and then you were saying confirm uh, because there are two uh, two different things, right? So to be uh, consistent with you know how we were saying that. Word. So yeah, those are some things. And I think um, here are some comments here. Beth, uh, okay, I just read right at the top. Okay, so Chris, um, yeah, Chris saying wanted you to continue. Yeah, definitely. I think we all felt that way. Uh, Kennedy, good wording, but hard to distinguish the literal from the figurative. So, um, so I guess um, Kennedy is referring to the application, the exercise, the visual. Is that uh, is that it, Kennedy, or is that something else? I think he's answered himself. He's told me exactly because of time. Um, and I think the, 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 I, I think the time factor that's why you couldn't add up everything. Right, right. Okay, yeah, so I guess that's well the presented one. good wording. I didn't did this good work. Hmm. Thank absolutely. You. And so Avni, uh, Dave, uh, I'm sorry, Beth. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. The I think the uh, definitely all ages, but yeah, specifically with youth, I think um, that's that'll be very effective. Um, like Rose says, uh, right. So good, uh, good, uh, Sam. Thank you, uh, and keep working at it. And uh, maybe uh, even on this sermon, you know, you could expand it, and um, and I'm sure it'll be a blessing. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Right. I, I know you. You. I think your your children are there in the background. I think you had to combat <laughs> that as well. <laughs> I, 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 I know. Uh, wanted to mute at this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you managed to that. Me. I think that's good. So that will that'll work well with street preaching also, you know, so many things happening uh, and then you're just going ahead with the message. <laughs> that's nice. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
Yeah. Yeah. Bet says. Uh, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Prabhak, uh, time was a challenge. Yes. That's true. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll. Uh, somebody said anything? Um, sorry. Okay. So we'll move on to the next um, next speaker, who is Mangi. So Mangi, if you're ready, um, you can start. Is Mangi there? Yeah, Mangi. Uh, so it's eleven twenty eight. 28, so maybe we'll take it as 11, 29 when you start. So, yeah. If you're ready, do you have a presentation or something? Uh, yes, I do have a presentation. I'll present it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share. And uh, uh, it is a privilege to share after Samuel has shared, the great Samuel. And also it's difficult because we, we have a similar... Uh, kind of same topic where he shared on being set apart and uh, I'm sharing on uh, the, the holiness of God. So it's, it's a bit difficult, but by God's grace, we should be able to, we'll go through it. <laughs> okay, I'm sharing my, my screen, but it's taking time to load. Uh, She'll be coming soon any moment from now. But meanwhile, I can I can start because of time. Um, I chose to speak on the holiness of God because it's the, the topic that we speak about it, but we don't really understand. Um, well, my screen's frozen. I don't know if I'm still on. Can we can hear me? see. Yeah, we can hear you, uh, Mangi. We can oh, hear you. Okay. It's, it's uh, very audible, very clear. And the presentation? Presentation is not on. So I think um, are you using that button, the arrow in the box, uh, to be able to present? Yes. And also, your presentation needs to be open uh, for for you to, you know, for it to come up in that list. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's because of time. Let's. To the presentation, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just talk, and if it comes up, yeah. then it does. Okay. Sure. Um, just to speak about the holiness of God, because it is a subject that we, we hear more about holiness, but we don't really understand what it is. And the scripture that I'd like to read is uh, Leviticus, Leviticus eleven verse fourteen. It's God says, for I, I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that I will be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. Uh, God took Egyptian out of uh, Israelite out of Egypt to the land of Israel so that they can be holy. So, So that there can be people who, who will worship him, people be uh, so that his glory might be. So I think uh, he dropped off from the call. Okay, let's just give him a minute to join. Uh, did anyone get the reference? Uh, was it uh, Leviticus? Um, can you just put it on the chat, please, if you got the reference? I I heard it as Leviticus 11.14, um, but that doesn't seem to be the reference, so I'm not too sure. Um, the scripture reference that uh, Maggie shared. Um, if he's on, okay, Le Leviticus 11 is what you heard, okay, 11, 1920 is it, okay. Mm -hmm. um, no, that is also not the reference. Okay, anyway, we'll ask uh, him to clarify. Um, 
Okay, probably you can check on the, you know, if it's if he's on WhatsApp, uh, you can just ask him if he's uh, if he's finding it difficult to join or I don't know, maybe his internet stopped or um, I'm not sure. Okay. So who would be next? That's uh, Susan Nirmal. We we'll just give one more minute, and then uh, if Susan Nirmal is here, um, Susan, are you in the? Oh, yeah, yes. you are here. You are here. Okay, okay. We we'll just give one more minute, and then if not, we will start with uh, you, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, we will start. It's eleven thirty-four uh, on my clock. So if you if you finish, um, I think we'll still have time to you know review. So so I guess um, uh, Maggie can do it in the next class. So so yeah, you go ahead, uh, Susan. Why don't you present? So maybe somebody can what text him, uh, text Maggie, and say that you know if he's unable since he's unable to join he could present uh, from uh, sam i think you um uh, you, you are still presenting i think I, I can see the presentation icon uh, uh, on your dp so can you just check um, and then you know uh, not present um, i don't think i have the present icon like if i if i do uh -huh. because i not... see it um okay i see that i can across on your dp maybe uh yeah now it's presenting now it's presenting and, and yeah I, yeah stop okay i see, still see the icon there i don't know why okay okay fine right sam um I, ho I hope it's not because of me that matthew <laughs> no i no no i tried to present and i could so it's giving me those options so i don't think it's because of that yeah um Okay, so um, yeah, Susan, you can go ahead and present, please. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. My uh, topic is very simple, but uh, it's very important for our believers. Uh, according to me, I want my believers to become bride of Christ. And bride means church. Church means we ourselves and we get together. That is a bride. Whom Jesus want to get uh, wants us to get ready for his second coming. He wants us to be holy and pure. We see the earthly bride, how she gets ready for her marriage. Even before two months, she start getting adorning herself for her marriage. And when we go to attend her marriage, we can recognize her that she is the bride because of her makeup and her dress. Similarly, when Jesus will come to take us, Jesus also wants uh, us to be like a bride. We should get adorned. And I can give an illustration about the wise virgins. Like the wise virgins who took oil in their lamps in abundance, but not like foolish virgins. The, uh, the, sorry, the bride. So we have to get ready like the wise virgins and not like foolish. When the bridegroom came, the bride invites all foolish to turn from their foolish ways. In uh, Revelation 14, 18, we see about pureness. One of the pillars is our purity. Only those who are pure in heart, according to Matthew 5th chapter 8th word, only they can see God. So God remains in their heart who are pure. And we can remain, and those who are pure and sincere under any circumstance, even if there is a raging storm around them. And the bride, 
she is always fair with others gentle patient forbearing courteous and she is never harsh those who, and the bride she who are willing to receive exhortation and correction from others and she will be truly a glorious church which jesus expects us the bride of christ should be full of mercy and good fruits even the place where i do ministry there also i do ministry in rural areas and there also i expect them to be like bride day by day and so now they have started to uh, come out of their uh, bad habits they have quitted their old habits like taking alcohol tobacco and uh, in rural areas i see many badders flowing from their mouth but now they it is reduced very much and now they have started sharing gospel to others and uh, also they don't get involved in any of idol related programs uh, they just ignore it and also they don't uh, contribute them in such programs they are slowly trying to come out of all this and uh, their faith is very simple and it is also strong they believe in jesus wholeheartedly and so it is very easy to get them molded as a bride bride watches her inner thoughts rather than her external life she longs for god's approval over her inner life yet bride is far away from perfectness but she goes on pressing and growing each day towards perfectness even we can see one word from Revel revelation 212 entering into new city called jerusalem here also it clearly states that the bride is a holy jerusalem apostle john in his vision of the end age he sees the city coming down from heaven adorn as a bride meaning that the city will be gloriously radiant and the inhabitants of the city the redeemed of the lord will be holy and pure wearing white garments of holiness and righteousness believers who are in christ jesus are the bride of christ and they wait with great anticipation for the day when we will be united with our bridegroom until then we have to remain faithful to him and say with all the redeemed of the lord every time come lord jesus and also one word we can see in ephesians 5:25 to 27 and just as there was a betrothal period in biblical time during which the bride and groom were separated until the wedding so is the bride of christ which is separated from so is the bride of christ separate from her bridegroom during the church age her responsibility during the betrothal period is to be faithful to him until his coming knowing that we are the bride of christ and the bible states that the bridegroom of jesus bridegroom or jesus is coming again coming again so we we are already betrothed to christ and he has given us a friend and that is the holy spirit like the wise virgin who took oil in their lamps in the same way holy spirit helps us to remain lighted till the end and now also i pray that we shall be committed and conscious to the reality that the bridegroom is coming and we nobody knows when the day will come but i assure myself and also you all that we know that he will come again and so we shall stand devoted to our betrothed betrothed so that on the day of his coming there will be much oil in our lamps and we will be ready to meet our bridegroom thank you sir right um thank you thank you susan you still have uh, i think maybe four more minutes um okay but uh, i guess you're done right um okay so thank you susan yeah so that was um, that was good uh, very good effort and um, you you spoke with a lot of uh, i think a lot of clarity uh, conviction and you shared uh, the personal example of um, 
uh, you know of of the from the from the ministry that you've been doing and uh, and how you're preparing the you know the people whom you are ministering to to be the bride i think yeah so the, the bride of christ um, you know again the topic uh, wonderful um and obviously this is uh, for a christian audience but you can also work on the um, definitely work on the title right uh, you know uh, or you can uh, you know sermon topic uh, i know you've I, i'm just looking at the uh, at the sheet which uh, says getting adorned with christ like nature uh, but you can always um, you know think of creative ways of expressing the same thing right um, uh, even even getting ready or um, you know uh, or i don't know wedding day or something like that would uh, would would be uh, would provoke the people would stir up the uh, you know uh, curiosity in people to wanting to know more uh, so you can definitely use a you know a good, good title you can work on it uh, but uh, so th- so these are some things that i see um, uh, definitely you know very confident and uh, with a lot of conviction with a lot of clarity um, yeah um, and and good points i think um, you shared about readiness uh well the bride preparing herself two months before and that's the first time i'm hearing that and i think uh, uh you know that probably emotionally physically you know uh, uh, there's a lot of preparation that goes and uh, and yeah um thanks for presenting that perspective uh, i think it's good to um, i mean is as uh, for me interesting to know that and also you know what you shared about uh, you know the bride is very recognizable you know you see because of the way she is adorned and you can easily identify in that crowd of you know even if it's a huge wedding you know who the bride is and uh, uh, because of you know uh, what she is adorned with right and uh, and the preparation of course uh, during the betrothal period uh, the preparation um what i felt uh, a couple of things you know one is when you're sharing the scripture you could uh, like you shared about revelation 14 18 i think revelation 21 to and then also uh, you know uh, so you could take some time to read it out you know you had time you had uh, four more minutes so you could take some time to read out the scripture or you may even put it in the chat if uh, possible so um, so we can look at it we can we can read it ourselves um, and then you know when i when i saw uh revelation 21 and uh, and verse 2 uh, is talking about new jerusalem uh, again prepare prepared as a bride adorned you know the whole uh, the, the city you know new jerusalem prepared as a bride adorned for her husband uh you know i've read that but i never noticed that before you know now that we were talking about the bride of christ so it's important when you present scripture so that you you know you give time for people to to look at it so when they actually physically look at it or when you put it on the screen um then you know there's then you get something you know people it speaks word of god speaks word of god is alive so you know you get something out so um, you know uh, don't be in a rush to finish but um, you know uh you time yourself and you can give people time to um read the scripture right um and also matthew matthew i i didn't get the reference uh, i don't know because i was trying to you know focus on revelation 14 18 and then uh, you know you quoted that scripture also so you could slow down when you're quoting scripture the yeah, uh, if you're not quoting you could just read it out you know you can just say paraphrase it read it out so it makes sense um uh the other the second thing was i just felt that so this was one about scripture you could work on the other thing is the arrangement of the of the content right so you could uh, uh you could arrange it a little uh, a little more so that it's it's even more impactful right you could uh, let's say uh, preparation you know what should the bride do right so you could arrange it and uh, and draw from okay this is what the bride does so you know be other bride of christ so this is what we could do so practically what should we do uh, i think you mentioned all that it's just that it needs to be arranged so um, like for a person like me it will uh, it'll be easier for me to assimilate uh, when i think about it and then easier for me to uh, even begin to you know walk in it so uh, that is what uh, i felt yeah so yeah so why did you choose the topic uh, susan um, a uh, bride of christ is it something that you've been teaching uh, the people or uh, something that's uh, yeah 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 sir when uh, i came to know about this presentation i was praying to god 
and then suddenly this topic struck me about bride of christ you can mm. arrange this topic okay okay nice and so where do you 5 8 yeah. uh, it is written blessed are the pure in heart for they shall mm. see god okay so like 25. the uh, bride who is uh, who gets ready is pure from all filthiness so mm. church also should get ready right right thank you and uh, so where do you minister and where are you based out of uh, where do you stay sir i am from maharashtra okay and uh, i think uh, from maharashtra one boy called rahul shukla was there studying there right from nagpur right yeah yes and yeah so i am ministering rural areas okay actually my husband is here in urban uh, called in a district okay and i go to rural areas uh, okay. near about 10 to 12 villages i coordinate mm-hmm. and i myself also goes to four to five villages okay good to hear that all the best yeah by ministry. god's grace <laughs> yeah god bless right uh-huh. thank you sir. um yeah okay so here are some uh some more comments you can just go through that feedback from kennedy from avni some encouragement from avni yeah wonderful so all the best for your ministry and god bless you um yeah just that arranging it would really help help me learn thank you you know yeah okay okay so maggie sorry that you uh, you couldn't continue i think you had some uh internet issues uh yeah i couldn't yeah. Pre- present but I, i had my uh, the p uh, what called puppets open and i couldn't i didn't see that so I was off, so. oh okay <laughs> okay so wednesday you know wednesday you can do i actually put a schedule uh, on the second page of the same uh, sermon topics uh, you know google sheet uh, the second page has a presentation a presentation schedule schedule i'll change that i'll just move things down a bit so you could start on wednesday uh, 13th october and then the others could move down so I, i'll fill in the other dates also um, yeah so what i thought was um, you know uh, we are we are almost done with um, uh, with ministry of the pastor evangelist and teacher and a, a couple of more videos that we want to watch in the next session so once we finish that so um, we could use that for our biblical preaching class um, uh, it's just that i just need to know if everyone who is there in that class is also part of this class you know so i could put the link there and we could uh, you know we could uh, whatever the the notes that we want to go through i could teach on monday and then wednesdays and fridays we could use for the presentation and that way uh, everyone has enough time to present right okay okay so uh, yeah have a great weekend god bless uh, those who are preparing for wednesdays and fridays you know just go ahead prepare uh, get ready and uh, i'm really enjoying your presentations uh, just wanted to know it's been a it's been a blessing right uh, and uh, there's always some take away from whatever you present so i thank god for that and thank you all have a blessed weekend we'll catch up again on monday okay bye bye thank you first see you